Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. This is my Law and Theories video series. In this episode, I explore how an open world MMO Halo game could potentially work. So I've been thinking about Halo Infinite and the theory that some have that the, the name implies that it's going to be an open world kind of game. Given that the technology is definitely there to be able to implement such a game, with the procedural generation and the ever-rising power of console systems, it certainly doesn't seem to be a technical limitation, although I'm sure some graphical fidelity or gameplay dynamicism may be sacrificed as a trade-off, as consoles still don't quite match up to PC specs. I also make note of the fact that many people also disagree that an open world game would even work within a Halo context. While argument could be made in agreement, humour me while I share some ideas with you on how I think an open Halo world could work. So, how could a Halo procedurally generated open world first person shooter massively multiplayer online game work? A Halo OWFPS MMO. I kind of get why they call it Infinite now. So, let's just start with the setting. So, it's already all but confirmed that the place that we're seeing during the Slipspace Engine game demo, or more accurately, the Halo 6 teaser, is Zeta Halo. It is likely that the entire game will take place on Zeta Halo, which isn't a bad thing, as all of Halo CE took place, with the exception of the first mission on Installation 04. A lot of varied places, environments and conditions can be had on a Halo ring. Plus, it is an area of 15 million square kilometres, which is insane. It's not far off a 300 kilometre band of habitable land wrapped around the entire equator of Earth. We also know the Chief is there, and it's more than likely Infinity will be there as well. So we know in Halo 4 that they actually gave a, a canon reason as to why multiplayer is actually law. They reasoned it was because the Infinity has a deck dedicated to battle simulations called War Games. Infinity is a huge ship, it's, it's difficult to get across how massive this beast really is. If you remember the Warhog run at the end of Halo CE, that although it wasn't accurate to the actual size or layout of a Halcyon-class cruiser, it was a distance of nearly 2 kilometers. The Infinity is 5.7 kilometers, nearly three times as long as the Warhog run in Halo CE. She is also about 830 meters wide, so we're talking a pretty huge area dedicated to S-Deck. But these are just sizes of places. How will it actually work? I'm just going to run with this, okay? Okay, so you load up the game. You instantly create your character. Basic armor is currently all that's available, but you change your gender, emblems, tag, colors, name, the basics, maybe even some character customization if the engine allows it. So hair color, facial features. But you also pick your Spartan 4 Gen 2 tech suit colors, your battle dress uniform, you click start or accept and you are welcomed aboard the Infinity with a cool cinematic cutscene. Your character model loads into the game either in a cryo bay or in the Spartan 4 barracks in their battle dress uniform or BDU, or in armour if there's no character customization. Most of the other Spartan 4s you see around you are other players. There are NPCs that can do various stuff for you and you for them. You could walk around S deck. You can go to social areas where you can just hang out and chat. You meet up with some friends, your team, or you go it alone and decide some multiplayer is in order. So you walk through the Infinity or take its fast travel pod system to the War Games deck. You walk in and agree with several options War Games, Firefight, Custom Games, Forge. You talk to the NPC technicians there and they give you the options. You choose Forge. The technician activates the Forge sim. A cutscene generates as you sit down at a terminal and your view is filled with the Forge menu. Pick your map, conditions, load it up, start forging. The canon explanation is that you're creating a War Games variant on a simulation system that exists aboard Infinity and the S deck. You finish that for now, you back out and choose War Games. The NPC cycles you through into the War Games sim deck. A quick loading cutscene starts of War Games starting up, and boom you spawned into multiplayer. Maybe you wanted some custom games instead. Fine. Tell the NPC technician you wanted a custom game before you actually go in. Same kind of scenario, but you choose the variables. Firefight is included. You win credits and commendations to unlock achievements 
and armor by what points you score in war games and firefight. Custom and forge is kind of ignored, but that's to be expected. You've now played a few games, so you back out. The game ends at a cutscene generates where you actually see the map that you were just playing kind of disintegrate around you, and you walk out of now a simulation deck back into the war games lobby. Now you decide it's time to play some Spartan Ops type games. This is another place where you can earn credits and accommodations to unlock stuff. You move to the Spartan Ops area of S deck. It's a briefing room where Spartan operations are available to go on. These could be updated weekly if done right. You choose one to do and a cutscene activates showing you moving to the armor deck where you get fitted in your armor. You drop down into the pelican base, load up and launch from the infinity down to Zeta Halo or in orbit around Halo or outside infinity depending on what the Spartan Op is. Spartan Ops begins. Now you get a kick ass. You finish up there, you choose to stay on the ring or you can move on to other ops or you can decide to head back. You decide to head back and you get picked up by a pelican and flown back to the infinity. On board the infinity you just hang out for a bit, maybe you want to watch back your games. You can go to the theatre deck where mission cameras, your view and others views of the games that you've been playing are streamed and recorded. You've earned some credits now and unlocked some new armors, ranks and equipment. Go to the armory. Acquisition the new armor you want and load them onto your armor. You can move around and look at your suit from every angle. You can also choose your weapons loadouts and equipment to keep things interesting. It's worth noting the armor itself also grants you particular perks based on what you wear, so choose carefully. Time for some exploring of the Halo Ring. You move to an expedition area area of the Pelican base. You load up and are dispatched onto the Halo Ring. Where you are now literally goes off anywhere you please. The whole Halo Ring is accessible if you choose. You can go to the very edges where the massive walls hold the atmosphere on the internal surface. You can use the built-in forerunner teleportation grids to get around quickly if you want, or you can go the long way around in pelicans, hornets or banshees. Hell, you could try to walk it if you really wanted to. You'll come across wildlife, some friendly, some not so friendly. You'll come across other Spartan fours, which are players doing their thing. You'll come across enemies that you'll need to kill, you'll discover caches of weapons, loot and various other items of interest. You'll find terminals and hidden facilities, you might encounter pockets of flood being contained or fought by sentinels in Zeta Halo's monitor. The possibilities are literally endless. Go exploring, get completely immersed in the 15 million square kilometer procedurally generated open world. All online Halo players in the world occupying the ring and infinity there with you. You may come across other solitary Spartan fours. You might encounter entire clans of dozens of Spartans. Who knows? But time for some structure. Time for some campaign. Request an evac. A pelican comes and picks you up. Cutscene brings you back to infinity. You travel through the S deck to the campaign area. This one has to be executed correctly and perfectly. It is more of an open transition, so it's more believable. You make the choice for campaign and a cutscene starts. You're walking down the corridors of infinity, seeing it from behind your own visor, from first person perspective. You're moving towards the armor deck. As you step off the elevator, the perspective changes so you now see your Spartan walking through the armor stations, but before you get to where you're going, your Spartan notices something. Someone. Someone unmistakable. Master Chief has just finished putting on his new armor. He steps out of the armor station and walks directly past you. He gives you a nod as he passes. The perspective shifts and follows Chief as he moves through the start of the campaign or a transition that ties nicely with your last mission you played in campaign. Now following Chief, the real campaign begins. And you begin this new chapter of the Halo story with Chief. So what do you think? Will that work or not? It could be set so that when you load into the game, if you want to do campaign straight away, it loads that cutscene I just described early and the Spartan he nods to is just a base Spartan 4 wearing recruit or warrior armor or a new base variant. Either way, I think it works. 
At the very end of the campaign, Chief could return to Infinity in much the same way he did at the end of Halo 4, and disarmor, so to speak. And when he does that, he could also seamlessly pass that same Spartan, or maybe a slightly different one, queuing the beginning of your multiplayer experience as well. Like I say, I think it works. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below and I look forward to what you have to say. If you're new to the channel and like lore theories and Halo technology being analysed to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon so next time I put a video out you're told the second it hits the shelves. I want to take a minute to thank the Halo community over at Amino for their continued support of the channel and humouring me with my continued blog posts over there. If you're not already a member I strongly recommend you jump aboard, the link is in the description. Also if you really like the channel consider popping over to Patreon and give whatever support you can over there. It massively helps me out and frees up more time for me to put into this Halo content. I've said in quite a few videos now about something I've got planned in the future that's pretty big, and I'm still working on that particular front and it's looking to be something pretty considerable. I will give you more information as and when I explore the potentials of it, uh, but I really think you're going to love what I've got planned. And of course that's still dependent on the continued support from you guys and with it i think together we can create something pretty awesome so thanks again everyone now go rest your brains